have a good time. Put a smile on your face, yeah. Keep me caring. Elation Radio. Mm-hmm. Even brighten your day and help you through the night. Bring you good music. Keep me caring. Elation Radio. And here's your host. Yeah, K Web. We got the messengers. Scoop. God Squad. What up, Grace? Yeah. Hey, check this out. Yeah. Hey, I got favor. I got favor. Yes, I got favor. Yes, I got favor. Hey, I got favor. God Squad. Yes, I got favor. God Squad. Hey, I got favor. Yes, Lord. Hey, I got favor. Yes, Lord. Go get a hater. Go get a hater. Cause I got favor. Cause I got favor. Yes, I got favor. Hey, I got favor. Yes, I got favor. Hey, I got favor. Yes, I got favor. Yes, I got favor. God squad. Yes, I got favor. God squad. Forget a hater. Ooh, squad. Cause I got favor. God squad. Hey, I got favor. Live the life of sin. I thank God that I'm alive. Guns drawn at me at 16. I didn't die. People thought I'd be in jail cause I used to steal. But I never been to jail, I'ma keep it real. Yes, Lord. Jesus turned my life around and he let me know. Let me know. If you keep sinning, man, in hell is where you finna go. go. Then he gave me a wife and a family. Get, get, get. Tons of blessings, now I'm stunting on the enemy. Son, I live for Christ, I ain't perfect, I ain't hurting. Tell the devil I'm with Jesus, cause I know me out here searching. Man, I'm working on the beat. For the Lord, you know I'm wildin'. And as long as Jesus with me, I'ma always keep on smiling. Hey, I got favor, I got favor. Yes, I got favor, yes, I got favor. Hey, I got favor, God squad. Yes, I got favor, God squad. Hey, I got favor, yes, Lord. Hey, I got favor, yes, Lord. Oh, get a hater, get a hater. Cause I got favor, cause I got favor. Hey, I got favor, hey, I got favor. Yes, I got favor, hey, I got favor. Hey, I got favor, hey, I got favor. Yes, I got favor, yes, I got favor. Hey, I got favor, God squad. Yes, I got favor, God squad. Don't get a hater, who squad? Cause I got favor, God squad. Hey, I got favor. Walk through the storm, search for my spirit, y'all. Pushed by the wrongs, persuaded by material. Sunday it was church. Monday back to thuggin', Tuesday on the block, Wednesday I was lusting, Thursday chased girls, Friday played how, huh? 30 I was sipping, your boy was wildin' now, he's bringing out the best now, I'm poking out my chest now, something about his name, no lie, feeling fresh now, the spiritual weight got me strong in the word, I'm drunk in the gospel, the reason I swerve, my picture was blurry, so my father Repainted, my soul was dirty. Tossed it up, they replaced. Hey, I got favor, I got favor. Yes, I got favor, yes, I got favor. Hey, I got favor, God squad. Yes, I got favor, God squad. Hey, I got favor, yes, Lord. Hey, I got favor, yes, Lord. Go get a hater, Go get a hater. Cause I got favor, Cause I got favor. Hey, I got favor, hey, I got favor. Yes, I got favor, hey, I got favor. Hey, I got favor, hey, I got favor. Yes, I got favor, yes, I got favor. Hey, I got favor, God squad. Yes, I got favor, God Okay, now won't he do it? You ain't gotta put no logic to it. You ain't gotta put no science to it or no bastard to it. In the natural, when the spirit moving, I love my God. Got me walking straight with my head high, and I ain't never been no stunt guy. Got two kids and a blessed wife. God cooks his favorite punch, and I'm all in. Got room, wanna serve a bunch. Don't walk off, filled up. Never knew it was there. Now you stand up with your hands up. That's when that hand touch and the glory of God drop in about the flood up. Everybody put a praise up, cause I'ma do it within. You got a heartbeat, stand up. Love. This world can't tame us when we know the deal. You stressing, sitting, guessing if the love is real. My faith ain't determined by my shining wheels. God is all I know, I know what that's serious. Hey, I got favor, I got favor. Yes, I got favor, yes, I got favor. Hey, I got favor, God squad. Yes, I got favor, God squad. Hey, I got favor, yes, Lord. Hey, I got favor, yes, Lord. Oh, get a hater, oh, get a hater. Cause I got favor, cause I got favor. Hey, I got favor, hey, I got favor. Yes, I got favor, hey, I got favor. Hey, I got favor, hey, I got favor. Yes, I got favor, yes, I got favor. Hey, I got favor, God squad. Yes, I got favor, God squad. Oh, get a hater, who? Hey, I got faith. 
everything is going quite well, and um, man, I don't know what else to say. So today is a good day. Hey, Jason, you on with me today? Okay, seems like we might be having a little bit of technical difficulties, but we're gonna get it fixed. We're gonna get it all fixed here real quick. Um, today, I, I um. I wanted to start by just talking about some trials. I've gotten some, um, I had some really good news and I had some really tough news. And, you know, we all go through trials in life. And, uh, and I just, thank you, thank you, Kim. I just, uh, I just really been thinking about trials uh, for the last couple of weeks. And, um, wow, I figured what better way to express how I'm feeling than to talk to, uh, talk to my buddy and see how he's feeling because, uh, man, I, I've been doing some study and I've really just been reading the word a little bit. And um, so, but before I get too deep into what we're going to talk about, I'm going to make sure Jason with us now. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. How you doing today, man? Oh, man, it's good. I, you know, I can't complain much at all. You know, <clears throat> God is still in the flesh and food. Yes, sir, he is. Yeah. But just like the song just said, I got favor. You feel like you got favor these days? Always. Yeah, well. Always. <laughs> you know, I, I definitely want to talk about that because, you know, like, uh, this that season. I mean, you know, New Year started. We all made our New Year's resolutions, right? And we all know how long New Year's resolutions last. January, February, they started to get a little down March. Usually they only make it past March. I give everybody ninety days. So we we come into the end of most of our New Year's resolutions, right? But um I've been looking at what's going on in the world today, Jason. And um I I've I've looked at the world map, then I looked at the nation as a whole, and I looked at individual states, and I brought it down to it individual city where I live, and then I brought it home. It came right to my doorstep, if you know what I mean. And so I kind of wanted to just talk about, you know, what do we do when it seems like God has given the enemy, God has given Satan permission to take us through some trials. And, um, man, of course, you know, the first person comes to mind, when we look at our Bibles, we the first person that comes to mind is is Job. You know, we, we recognize he 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 was put under some serious uh, pressure by the enemy, and and the thing is, God allowed it. Like when you going through hard times, Jason, do you ever stop and think God is allowing this to happen? How do you accept that? How do you, you know when you first realize, man, this is tough. How do you rationalize in your mind that, God, you allowing me this, or do you think something different? I'll tell you, that's probably the hardest concept to embrace. And I've, I've seen kids and adults struggle with this concept. And, and, and you know, you say God is all powerful, but we go, we have all these things happening in our life. So, I think people question the authority of God. Well, he can't be all powerful if he lets these things happen, you know, or the opposite end, he's not that good because he let bad things happen. And I'll tell you uh, where I am now when I, 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 and I had to accept that, you know, everything that comes to, I'm in the hands of God and everything that comes to me has to go through those hands. And, it it does. It was a struggle for a long time to say like, if I'm going through all this, why would God allow it? And and it it, it was a bit of a struggle. And the only what how I was able to reconcile it was experience, right? And to go through that trial and then end up on the opposite mm-hmm. end of it, be better off. And then the next trial to use that memory of the previous experience. But yeah, I, I really wanted to take place on that because I think you said something. You said a mouthful when you said God allowed it, <laughs> right? Yeah. That, yeah. Go ahead. Let's elaborate on that. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I think, I think, I mean, like I said, it's so interesting that 
we've got this image of God and 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 we define good and bad based on our circumstances. And we've got this image of God that says, well, God is all good, so everything has to be good, right? Or or there's no way this powerful, loving, great God will allow bad things to happen to me. So, you know, what, you know, the the enemy must have me or something like that. And and it's interesting to watch how we try to reconcile the character of God in our humanity and to try to understand it. And and, and when we when when we struggle with that reconciliation, we then we don't question you know, the arrogance of human beings. We don't question our thoughts of what we're thinking and maybe we're thinking wrong. We question God himself. Well he can't be all powerful if he if these things are happening or he can't be all good because these things are happening. Right? And that's that I think for me I had to humble myself to say like my thoughts of God, I can't I can't put him in a box. I can try to understand them. I can use the words to understand them. The Holy Spirit can speak to me and give me understanding. But outside of yeah. divine invention, I'll never understand God and what he does or yeah. why he does what he does or everything that happens. But hmm. in that, in the absence of that understanding, you know, what do I feel it with? And I feel it with my faith that, hey, God is good, mm. right? He's been good to me. The word says he's good. My experience says he's good. My observation says he's good, so I gotta, I got I gotta keep trusting on that. See, see, it's funny because because it's tough. You know, a lot of us we say we have faith, but I always say it's it's easy to have faith when everything is going well. But but, but what do you do when you're in a position like Job? You love God, you worship God, you 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 you've done no wrong, and then all of a sudden. As I said before, God allows the enemy to flip your world upside down. And make no bones about it. Job complained. A lot of people will have you will have you think that Job never complained about his situation. And I believe in our suffering, at some point, you know, we like to say, uh, uh, as a young soldier, we love to say that every person has got his breaking point. Every man has his breaking point. So every man, woman, and child has a breaking point. And and Job had a breaking point. You know, he had lost everything, his crops, his his, his animals, uh, his, his livestock, his health. Everything was going down here. And listen to what he said. And I believe this is uh, – I'm actually going to read this from um, from uh, Job, uh, I think it's 23, uh, 3 and 4, where he says, I loathe my very life. Therefore, I will give – free reign to my complaint and speak out in the bitterness of my soul. God, I'm so upset. I'm going to complain. This is is a heartfelt complaint, right? Then he says, I say to God, do not declare me guilty, but tell me what charges you have against me. God, what I do wrong? Tell me. I ain't saying I'm guilty, but but, but tell me. Don't just say I'm guilty or something. Tell me, right? And then he's saying, he saying, does it please you to oppress me, to stern the work of your hands while you smile on the plans of the wicked? Oh, man. Look, look. He's saying, God, I'm, I, I've been good. I mean, you punish me, but the people who are the most wicked are being prosperous right now. Jason, have you ever looked out and it seems like the worst people get the best things? Have you ever felt like that? Oh, yeah, all the time. You you know what's going on in this world right now, and I'm not just talking about politics, but it seems like the worst people are getting the best that God has to offer. And and so when I'm going through my suffering, I, I ain't going to tell you no story. I had to ask God, this guy, uh, really? Did I do something to deserve this? Do you think every time we go through a struggle, every time we go through a hard time, Jason, do you feel like you did something wrong? Do you feel like you deserve that? I mean, unfortunately, I don't, right? Right? Okay. I, I, I'm going to go back to the arrogance of us as human beings. We don't ever okay. feel like, when, when does anybody ever say, hey, I deserve the punishment I got or I deserve the circumstance that's been dealt to me? I mean, even when we're guilty, even when yeah. we're guilty, yeah. even when I did, you know, even when I did 
you know, didn't tell the truth. And all of a sudden I'm getting mm-hmm. written up at work for not doing it. You know, do I say, mm-hmm. you're right, I, I deserve that? Or do I say, well, such and such did it too. Why ain't they getting written up? Wow, why, why, why? People do this all the time. Why are you, why are you singling me out, right? Uh-huh. It, it, I, I would love to say that, you know, I'm at a point where when things happen to me, I, I don't question why is it happening to me or, you know, why is it not happening to me, right? But yeah. as a human being, I start, we, we, we have a tendency to forget the things, the bad things that we do and the things that may yeah. lead to that, some of the decisions that were made, or even without the bad decisions, just to think that, you know what, hey, bad things are going to happen to me. You know, I'm a child of God, and, and, and I love the scripture that it says it rains on the just and the unjust alike, and we forget mm. that scripture, right? We forget mm. that scripture, because here we are, children of God, and and we're like, well, we, I, he's supposed to be our protection, our head's protection. Yeah, but he never said he was going to shield us from everything. Mm. See, I'm, I'm, I'm telling you, because cause like that is, Excuse me, sorry, but 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 that is the truth, and 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 I think that um, how, how do I say it? How do I say? It? Like when I ask that question of God, when I'm upset, right? When I'm saying God, you know what? Like I got to say it right now, Jason. I'm gonna be honest. I got to say it right now. It's from an old song from the 1980s, and, and actually, this is about two friends. One friend is saying, "I think my friend really trusts me too much because he trusts him to be around his wife and stuff all the time." Well, I'm saying, God, yeah, I say this a lot. I find myself saying this a lot. Man, God, I think you really trust me too much because <laughs> he got me under some serious pressure right now. And I don't know if I could take it without complaining. I don't know if I could go through it without being angry with you, God. But you know what it helps me do? It's the funny thing about life, about my life. Anyway, funny thing is I, I, I say things like, uh, I think you really trust me too much. And and then I say things like, uh, who better? Who better to go through what I'm going through than me, right? And and that's my way of keeping my mind off of my off of my weakness, right? Because, you know, the Bible even says it, that we're all frail, feeble, and weak, and that we're made of dust, right? That comes out of Psalms 10. So I'm not making this up. So I believe that it's okay to question God. It's even okay to doubt God. But when God answers you, it should be a humbling experience. It should be an experience that calls us to repentance. And and that's that's what happens normally. Like, it is hard. Uh, to go through life and and just like I I, I I meet Christians who are they see the world through rose colored glasses and I'm like I know good and well that can't be real right I know that ain't true but I know at least one person that I've met in my life this dude smiles about earth thing and he's always a beat and I know it's real I know it's who he's become in Christ I've never seen this guy Flustered to the point where he's lashing out at the world or he's feeling sorry for himself. And so when I'm going through, when I am going through and I'm frustrated, I'm like, David, I'm frustrated. Man, I do complain to God. I do ask God questions. And, and, and I'm telling you, if we, if we do that and we sit back and we listen, God will communicate with us. It may take a while. You may not hear it the first 50 times he speaks to you. But there's going to be that one time when you hear it. He may show it. I mean, I don't know how God speaks to everybody. He has a way of communicating with all of us. But do you believe that to be true, Jason, that, that when you're in the midst of that storm, that you can you can reach out and you can talk to God and he'll actually answer back? Have you ever oh, had yeah. that experience? Oh, yeah. I, 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 think, I think to your point, you know, uh, what I've learned in my relationship with God is he, the main thing he wants is a close relationship. Right, mm-hmm. he wants you to talk to him. He wants you to come to him. He wants you to emote with him. When you're happy with him, yeah, he wants to hear the praises and worship. When you're upset with him, yeah, he wants to hear your struggles. He just wants to know us and every aspect of us. He already knows that we're flawed. He already knows that we're going to fall short. But in spite of that, he still just wants to know us. So, mm. so in those times of trials, people want to think like, I can't go complain to God, or or Unlike your friend, they have this false optimism, right? This hmm. optimism like, hey, nothing's going bad. Everything's great. God is great. God is a blessing in my life. 
no, 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 the bad stuff it ain't real because God is great and God is good. And 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 that false optimism, although it looks beneficial, what typically happens is when you come face to face with reality, that optimism turns to pessimism, turns to doubt, turns to 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 bitterness, right? Uh-oh. And and, Uh-oh. and I think what God wants, He wants us to come to Him angry, upset, scared, questioning, you know, because in those moments, that's a, that's the ability to connect. Right. I mean, we got to think about it with our own kids. When our kids are, you know, they're questioning something that we did, something we did didn't look quite right, you know, and it made them feel yeah. weird about who we are. And it made us made them question us and the character of who they are. We want them to come to us and say, Daddy, that didn't look right. And we want to be able yeah. to express in the parts, to express our minds, to, to allow that connection. Because when we, if done correctly, we then grow, grow a strong connection with our, with, with that, with our children when we go through that. Oh, Dad, I never understood that. Oh, Dad, I never understood you worked that way. Man, I, and now I know a level of you that I've never known before, right? And that's what I have mm-hmm. with Father Wilson Russ. So, yeah, yeah. When, when times get bad, he wants us to come complain and, 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 and be like, this ain't right, this ain't fair, because the comfort that he provides us, even in the midst of it, does nothing but grow the relationship. Absolutely. You know, it's funny hearing you talk. I'm 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 driven to think about another story from the Bible. You know where I'm gonna go with this. And I'm going to go talk about David just a little bit. Uh, uh just a little bit. Think think about think about how a lot of us go through life and, and, and a lot of us we go through life when the times are good, we okay. But when it seems like times are starting to get rough, we kinda start to hide. Right, right. We know the bad times is chasing us because of stuff that we've done, but we want to go and hide. But think about if you were in a in a situation like David Jackson, where you had already been anointed the next king, right? But you already have a king, King Saul. We know he was the first king, right? First king of Israel, right? Right. That's what the people wanted, so God gave them that. But think about when he got power, what did he do? He did whatever he wanted to do. At some point, he really stopped following God, didn't he? Yep. How many? How many of us do that? How many of us do that? And then, when the man of God, the chosen one, the anointed one of God, shows up, now we think, oh, he took, he stole my anointing. He's He's come to show me up, and we want to rebel against that person. And now, all of a sudden, we're Saul, and we're chasing some somebody else who's in the position of David and, and he didn't do nothing wrong. All he was, think about it. David was nothing more than a true servant to Saul. Am I right? Okay. And, and I believe that the, 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 the reason he was able to follow Saul the way he did was because he was a child of God, because he was following God, because he was he was doing what he was supposed to be doing when he was supposed to be doing it. But I, but I, but I, I want to, I want you, I want us to focus not on being Saul because a lot of us have chosen that role. I want us to focus on that role of David. David's going on through life. He's minding his own business. There is an anointing over him. There's a lot of us that are just going on with our lives, and there is an anointing over us, and we don't even realize it. So lo and behold, the day comes when when God is putting his plan into action, right, right, right? The prophet comes, right. talks to, 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 to David's father, says, hey, this is the next king, right? He's the next king. I'm not even going to go through the whole story because you know what the story is like, right, Dave? I mean, right, Jason? You know the yep. story. Now, check this out. Check this out. Check this out. Check this out. He basically becomes a servant to the king. He's playing the good music. He soothes the king. He understands the king. He got all the answers. And yet, he's not out there boasting about it when you read in the Bible. He's just doing what God has for him to do. Now, the king gets jealous of him, right? Now, how many of us, how many of us, we feel like we're blessed? David had to have felt like he was really blessed, right? Because his life was going great up until then. Am I right? How yep, many yep. of us are going through life right now, Jason? Right now, have you ever been in a situation where everything was good, then all of a sudden, all that was good in your life turned against you? 
What would you do if you was in David's shoes? I mean, I mean, I, I think David's a great example of what to do, and, and I love his story because he he showed his humanity. If you read through Psalms, hmm. which you know he's the author of. A lot of the songs start with, oh, God, I'm going through this, or, oh, God, why'd you do this? It's like, it starts off with the whining and complaining, and, 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 and the same thing we saw in Job toward the end of this last trial, where he was just, like, just speaking out to God about the suffering and, and, the, uh, and the things that he went through. But as you continue to read through those songs, you see that David realized he, he, he emoted with God. He, he spoke with God. He shared his deepest, most innermost, you know, concerns and struggles with them. And in the end, he came back and said, but, you, but God, you are good, and I know this, right? Mm. And I think, and I think that's, 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 the, uh, that's the takeaway. There's a couple of takeaways, actually, if you think about it, is yeah. that yeah. it's okay, like you said earlier, it's okay to complain to God. It's okay to question God. It's okay to, 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 to just share those negative feelings and emotions with God, you know, but then use those, use that emotion, use that energy to to cause a greater connection, you know. So mm-hmm. yeah, and I'll tell you, in my personal life, when you're going well, everything's kind of going good, and all of a sudden you get hit with this thing that's out of the blue, and and, and you're just like, man, what do I do with this, right? And and yeah, and it's never like you see on TV where this bad thing happens and in in an hour and a half it gets resolved and you live happily ever after. <laughs> yeah. That's not yeah. that's not quite how the real world works, right? You know, you yeah. you go and, and then you know, typically you carry some stuff with that. But our happily ever after is promised to us and it's not something we, we, we search for, it's something we live in. And and I and I think Ooh. what I love about David is that he actually lived in that. He may have had moments where he would uh when he would glance at his circumstance. And he would glance at the, the trials and the struggle, but ultimately he he, get, he gazed on God. Pastor said that one time. He said we need to glance, glance at our problems, but keep our gaze on God. And I think David is a great example of that. Man, because because ain't it funny? I mean, ain't it funny? Like I, I like what you said just a minute ago. How we look at TV in an hour and a half, half hour, half hour and a half, and we didn't got through the whole problem. But 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 even like David, when I read the story of David, you know, it just seems like he just went through for a little while. But we're talking David. Theologians believe that David went through this running from Saul from anywhere from seven to ten years. Right? The significance of this is this. A lot of us, we go through a hard time, and we think, because, well, I'm upbeat, I'm holding on to your every word, God. And it seems like we hold it on forever. You start going through a problem on Monday, and Saturday you're still going through the problem. And you mad Sunday because the problem ain't over in a week. That's just not how it works. Now, I imagine some issues are like that. But when you're dealing with life issues, it takes time. It, it takes time. Like, 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 like I can tell you, and, and I'm guilty of, 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 of putting too much of my personal business out, but I can tell you I've gone through a lot in these last three years, right? Uh, a lot, <laughs> you know. I mean, like job loss, uh, in and out of the hospital, a diagnosis with, the, with, with, with these autoimmune disease, broken bones, and, 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 I, and, and I'm happy because God has blessed me, right? And then, and then I get this latest bout that I'm dealing with, and, and it shows up. <laughs> I would like to say it showed up out of nowhere, but it didn't show up out of nowhere. It's it's been on the radar for at least ten years now, and now I gotta go have another surgery. And then I gotta go through all these treatments. Man, look, look, look. Here's the beauty in it. Here's the beauty, Jason. Here's the beauty for me. Now, for me, and if anybody is is going through something like this, if anybody's struggling with it. You know, the key, I believe the key is just what you said a minute ago, Jason. The key is it's okay to get it out your system. Talk to God about it, right? Talk to God about it. But at the end of your questioning and your talking, you know, and all you're getting, get an understanding and understand this before you even start to complain about God. You have to, you have to know that he loves you. You have to know that 
that there are those times when we got to read that poem Footprints and we got to realize that when there's one set of footprints, it's not you being alone and isolated. That's God lifting you up off of the sand and walking so that the footprints you see in the sand are not your own. They're his. You are but an angel at that point, and he is carrying you through that difficult time. And, and, and I'm telling you from personal experience, if we understand that that's what's really going on, it's okay. We get more effect out of our, quote, unquote, our complaints to God. Why? Because we do just like David did. We may start out complaining, but at the end, we end up praising him, right? Not for the bad things, but for the good times. And not if there are no good times, right, you start to thank him for being able to get through the bad times. And, and, and I think a lot of us, we lose that meaning. When life gets difficult, we lose that meaning, we lose that understanding, and we think that, well, Lord, I praise you, everything should be hunky-dory, but it's not like that. You don't believe me? Read the story about Jesus. (laughs) Go back and read. Look at where he is. And I I think for me, I think, you know, don't praise him because of the circumstances he's provided you. Praise him that he's present in your life, Right. Praise him that he's there. And no matter what the circumstances wow. are, you know, it, it, it's, it's you have a God that's with you. And, I, you know, and I, I believe this wholeheartedly. Because I'm a Christian doesn't mean that I'm not going to have the same struggles as that next man, that I'm not going to face broken relationships. I'm not going to face financial struggles. I'm not going to face uh, medical struggles. But the difference between me and that guy is that I have a relationship with Christ. And I know that all those things that I'm going through, all those circumstances, yeah, yeah. are for my good. Because God has, to your point, God has allowed them, and he's doing it for my benefit. So I praise him because you're just there. And you give me the opportunity mm. to go through this and to, and to grow closer to you. Mm. See, and, 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 and that's funny because, because, because I know when I'm feeling it. Like like last night I was having a moment, right? I'm sitting on the edge of my bed and um, I was just like, "Wow, God, I, <laughs> I re- again, I got to go back to what I was God, I really appreciate you always bringing me through a uh, situation. So, oof. Lord, um, yeah, I'm gonna need a little more strength. I'm gonna need, I'm gonna need you to help me to understand a little more because I'm struggling with this, right? And, and, and I just had a little moment, and I, and I had to talk to God. But I tell you what, I tell you what, I tell you what. For me, it's just like you said. I had to sit there, and I had to meditate for a minute. And I'm telling you, when I sit, I close my eyes, I get real quiet, I control my breathing, I slow the breathing down. I release all the anxiety from my body, just my breathing techniques, and I focus on the Word of God. And in those moments, uh, in those moments, it's almost as if I can hear the voice of God speaking to me. I don't hear an utterance, a word, but I hear, I, I feel a peace, and it just kind of takes over me. And, and, and it allows me, again, for me, it's a feeling of freedom at that point. And I've been doing it for a long time, so maybe it's just a little easier for me. But but I would encourage anybody who's going through those situations to take the time to do that. And, and, and really, because a lot of us, we do a lot of praying, or we do a lot of talking, but we don't do a whole bunch of uh, 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 listening. Uh, you know, they say all things in prayer and supplication. Uh, we don't hear, we don't do a bunch of listening. We don't do much sitting back and we try to figure out what God is going to do rather than, or, or, or here it is, well, I'm just going to do what God told me to do. Well, but did God tell you to do anything? Sometimes it's just meant for us to praise him. Like you said, Jason, uh, appreciate his presence in our lives. And sometimes getting through a bad time is just that. I know that God is with me. Think about, as I was saying about David earlier, think about him hiding in the cave, and then all of a sudden, uh, Saul shows up in one of the caves, and David cuts the, the hem of his robe, 
and he could have killed Saul right then, but that's not what he wanted. Who do you think brought Saul to that cave? Who do you think had enough influence on David that he did not kill Saul? It was God, and God was ever present in David's life, even when he did wrong, God was there with him, right? And so, um, you know, these are some of the, the really tough times because, man, I, I, I'm going to be the last one to tell you that going through trials is easy. I'm going to be the last one to tell you that because it's tough. And sometimes it, it hurts. Have you ever gone through a trial, Jason, where you were just basically in tears the whole time? Your heart was just that heavy? Would you oh, yeah. think about anything else? How did you get? How do you get through that? I mean, and you know, when you talk about those heavy emotions, I mean, I think that's the first thing. You know, okay. you know what I what I used to do um, very unsuccessfully was try to hide myself from, it, try to pretend like those feelings don't exist. That you know, bad things aren't really happening to me, or you know, just all kinds of other stuff. But what I learned is kind of what you alluded to is that. In those tough times, in those what look like hard times, is the times where you you grow closer with God, and 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 that, and that relationship just goes further than what you could even imagine. So so for me, um, when I when I when I get to that point, when I get to that level of of where I'm at my wit's end, and I don't think I can do it anymore, I just I just like I look at God. And I'm like, man, I trust you, right? I trust you to 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 lead me. You got me to this point, and I know you're gonna get me to where I need to go. And so, so I, I think it's, it's it's really just understanding that mindset, understanding that 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 purpose that you've been given, and, and just you know, um, yeah, just understanding all that. So, so with 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 with, and I understand. I I'm, I like to associate a lot of stuff with with uh, with with uh, characters or people from the Bible, and and like like have you ever met somebody where you were constantly trying to guide them on the right track, and they constantly mocked you or they constantly ignored you and they they just never listened to you. And like like see see my thing is and and, and I'm putting this out there because maybe maybe you can help somebody with this. How do you do it? Like you work with youth a lot. How do you do it when they just don't seem to be getting the message? Well you know I, you know when I when I deal with that the first thing I think about is how God deals with me. Because there's been many times he has given me a very clear, concise message, and in my and in my own in my own wisdom and authority, I decided oh, I'm just going to do what I want to do. And and <laughs> what I do is just think about what does God do with me? Well, He loves me. That's all He does. He just continues to love me, and and just say, okay, you know, I'm gonna be here. You know, uh, whenever whenever you're ready, I'm gonna be here. You know, and, and his timing is greater than my timing, so he's just like, all right, I'm, I'm still here. So even when when you face it, when I come face to face with that kid who's really not listening, who's really not paying attention, I just realize, yeah. you know, hey, I do the same to God, and like, what he does with me, he just says, okay, are you ready? So I'm like, all right, well, I'll let you know, <laughs> right? So yeah, because that's that's the hard part. Uh huh. Go ahead though. No, 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 no. But to your point, it's, it's kind of like just, you know, just know that, hey, God loves me. And, and I appreciate the faith that he has in me and the and some of the things that his patience is 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 just so great. I, I, I get nervous about, you know, you know, when I'm scared anyway. I tell anybody in the heartbeat, I'm the scariest brother you ever want to meet. And people be like, yeah, whatever. I'm like, yeah, I'm scared because. Because I'm scared what God gonna do to me when I mess up, and, and then I realize He ain't gonna do nothing to me when I mess up, right? He, he's not gonna do anything. He, he's going to love me. He's going to discipline me when I'm, you know. God has His way of disciplining us, and there's no way to escape it. But, but I just, 
I, I um I struggle seeing p- other people struggle, especially in struggles uh, that I myself have already seen many, many times. Do you? Do you? Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? What's the word I'm looking for? Um, I mean, do you, you mentioned before in your own selfish way? So, so do you see a lot of arrogance out there? Like when you're trying to deal with something, do you feel? How do you really feel though? I mean, what kind of personal feeling does it invoke in you that that you're suffering through a situation? Like I know you got one situation in your life that causes you a lot of anger. And you want to challenge that situation, and no matter how much advice I give you about you challenging that situation, it's gonna make it worse for you. How does something like that make you feel? You don't. We don't have to talk about the exact situation, but just the feeling that 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 it provokes inside of you. And and when do you latch on to God? How do you allow God to have control of that? So I'll, I'll tell you the the natural feeling, especially in a situation where you feel like you're being done wrong that this is not mm-hmm. right, this is, there's no justice in this, um, there's no way this should be happening to me. As you go through those things and you have those feelings, it, it's the natural the natural human way is to, to, be, to get angry, to be hurt, to feel all those negative emotions. And, and for me, uh, my challenge, what I challenge myself with is, okay, Jason, you know, it's okay, like we talked about, it's okay to feel bad. It's okay to 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 be in that spot where you may be questioning, you know, God and, and you may be in those circumstances and in those feelings that you have. But then ultimately what has to happen is you have to realize, it's like, man, I serve a God who's great and good. And all these uh-huh. things that I'm going through, Although they, all they, they do, they don't feel good, right? There's nothing about them that feels good or I want to be dealing with. I've got to just trust that God has me here for a reason, and, okay. and I may not understand His reason. I may not, I may not get His reason, but the fact that it's His reason is enough for me. Mm. So, 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 in other words, um, uh. Some of us, we got to do the hard work, and the hard work is letting go. Because yep. I tell you what, one of the biggest things, and this is where we've been getting to, this is where I've been trying to get to through our whole, our whole talk today, Jason. For me, and it's the honest to goodness truth, the biggest thing that has happened to me by going through trials is here it is. Watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this. God would never change the situation for me. He would never just remove me from the situation. I don't care how much I begged, how much I cried. He never lit up until one thing happened. And that was when I looked in the mirror and I made a commitment to change me. I looked in the mirror and I said, change you. I had to kind of start to change the way I looked at a problem. I had to look at it from the right angle. And and, and and there was a thing I came up with, and it was just called Change You. And and whenever I felt lost, oh, whenever I felt entangled in anything, the situation is not always going to change. But if you change the way you look at it, oh, man. See, a lot of people miss this part. They miss this part because they want the world to adapt to what they think is ideal. And you know, like I know, they're just bumping their heads up against the wall because God ain't changing, right? Satan ain't changing, right? And the things of this world are changing, but usually they're not changing favorably, right? And so right. I looked in the mirror one day and I said, change you. You know, and, and that, that did something for me because I believe that that when you start to change yourself, you start to transition. You become more powerful, right? How, where does your power come from? It comes from education. It comes from wisdom. It comes from the process that you have to go through. You know what I'm saying? And so that was something I adapted. I mean, I just really, that's just something that, that, that I had to adopt for myself because I was struggling so much. Like, like I was struggling to a point where I just, Honestly, I just wanted to curse out loud. I, I did. I wanted to. I just wanted to um, to just curse out loud, and 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 I just wasn't brave enough to curse God. I wasn't. 
you know, it, that'd be like trying to curse my parents. Uh, I ain't going to lose all my, possibly my life, right? So, right. so um, think about this. Uh, I think it's in Philippians 3 and 7. It says something like, um, um, but whatever were gains to me, I now consider loss for the sake of Christ. And and I'm telling you, I just I, I really um, I really started to to look at my life, and 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 that's my mantra at this point. Change you, you know. I look in the mirror, and, and I change the way I see a problem. I change the way I feel about a problem. I don't let every little. I'm not blown from happy to sad just because the wind changes direction, or because I lose a friend, or because a friend says something bad about me, or because the the light company turns my lights off because I only paid half of my bill because the repo man is looking for my car and I got to hide my car in the garage because I ain't willing to give it up. I needed to go back and forth to work, right? I stopped trying to blame the situation and I started looking in the mirror to change it. So I started uh, counting all these things as joy. And and that is me. Now, I don't don't know if that makes sense to you, but but that's me. And, And that's how I've started to look at life. You know, in in, in, in in my life situation right now, I don't, I don't know, man. I I just uh, I, I I count it all joy. No, it, it, no, it's I, beautiful to me. I like mm-hmm. that. I like that change you because because once again, the the circumstances that we go through are just that. They're temporary. They're circumstantial. They're they they are part of the journey that we're on. Uh, with a God that loves us, and and yeah. if our focus only stays on those circumstances, those situations, then we lose track of the God that we serve that that does such a great job and, and that loves us and wants us to to bask in that love that He's given us. Um, so right. change you, I love it. I, I I mean I think that's a mantra we all should to try to get there because sometimes. That's what happens, right? Sometimes when we go through those trials and those tribulations, it's not about changing the circumstances. It's changing our perspective. It's us getting to a point where we can kind of see what God really wants for us, and we can kind of get past our own humanity and and our our own ideas of what this should be and how this should be to really see, okay, God, what do you have planned for me, right? And And... And and to change our perspective, to change our mindset, to change how we see things, um, really lends to that. Yeah, so I definitely I love that. Yeah, it could, it's 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 big. It's bigger than I mean, it's much bigger than I could ever emphasize because um, um, it, it's just. So big. I'm gonna say it like that. It's so big, and 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 I, I mean, I, I look at everything. I know we'll be we'll, we'll be we'll be off here in just a few minutes, though, Jason. But but I know that that I have seen so many people, and I've experienced this with individuals where where they 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 take a look at their situation, and and they don't see what really needs to happen. Like they they look and they say, well. Well, what if, and then and then they go, then they go, they, they what I call they go crazy. They go reaching out for stuff and and like like um, well I can change in this way, but I'm not gonna change in that way, right? And then and and then I, I have to tell them, you know, when you want to change, you know, when you, uh, what I like to call change management, right? The way you manage that is you gotta know what's gotta change. And what doesn't change, what must change, and what must not change, and, and people don't get it. Like like choices, we, we got to make careful choices, right? Everything not gonna change. The Bible don't change, right? But anything that's biblical is gonna stay the same. But everything that's cultural, I'm telling you, at some point, a culture is going to change. You know, your principles, your basic principles for for life, they don't change. But the things you do in life, the practices you make in life, they change, right? We change the things that we do, right? Our purpose for being here, our purpose even at work, it is the same. It doesn't change, right? But look at this. 
the personnel, the people that are with you change. People in our life. So, 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 so look, let's stop trying to change the things that aren't going to change. The Bible's not going to change. God is not going to change. It's you. And, and that's the struggle today, I believe. I, 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 look, I look at our schools. You know, the, 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 the system is what it is. The students have changed. The building itself hasn't changed much. The institution is still about learning, but it's the students who've changed. So we keep beating our heads against the wall trying to change God's word. It ain't going to change. We keep making up new meanings. We keep remixing uh, the Bible, as, 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 my, as, as, as my rapper uh, uh, Trick Daddy says. We got remixes to the Bible. You know what I'm saying? We, we, we keep trying to change the wrong thing. God ain't changing. I just want everybody to know that. God is not changing. He's the same. He's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. Ain't changing. So let's get busy. Let's go back to our own changes, and let's get busy. Let's start changing some things. We got to change the way we think, the way we act, the way we walk, the way we we respond to these trials. You know? Yeah. Hey, Jason, uh, remember I told you a long time ago I was going through this, 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 series of challenges with my kids and, and, and with their mom and all that stuff. My life was just crazy, right? Remember I told you I was going through all of that, right? I used to talk yes, to you all the time, and you always gave me sound advice, right? Yes, and sir. I always said, oh, nope, I ain't going to do it. Nope, 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 I ain't going to do it. Guess what happened? <laughs> what happened? What happened? I changed. <laughs> I changed. And, and, and guess what else happened? My kids changed. Guess what else happened? All those relationships changed, and they changed for the better. They changed for the better. You see, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Jason, but I believe that these trials that we face, they come not to kill or destroy us, but to make us stronger. They come to shape and mold us. We always talk about God being the potter and we being the clay, right? So why don't we take shape, right? He's molding us into what he wants and needs us to be. Why don't we take shape? And and, and so that's a big deal for me for the day, man. Um, um, I, I'm I'm really, you know, I got this struggle thing going on. And, and, and uh, you know, I, I, I think I told you, Jason, I got surgery coming up on next Thursday. I am as optimistic, upbeat, and as excited as ever because I know that God is going to bring bigger and better into my life, you know. And and I know he has already brought a healing to me. I just got to walk it out. I got to walk yeah. it out. I got to do just like, 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 like David did. I just got to walk it out. I got to go through like Job. I got to walk it out. And so, with that being said, man, uh, Jason, you got anything else uh, uh, you want to, any nuggets you want to drop on us today? I know you got, you filled, filled with wisdom. No, I, I just, just, just continue to, to, I think that if you, as a, we talked about these different men in the Bible and how they handled their trials, and remember, I, my, my favorite saying, we don't rise to the occasion, we fall to our level of training. And in each one of those instances, David did the training before the trial. Job did the training before the trial. So our success in our trials is going to be is going to be dependent on our training outside of. So don't. So in those times that we're not dealing with that trial, and and we do have a little bit of uh, of uh, uh, what I would call uh, you know some fresh breath with it. Just don't forget. In the midst of this is where I need to start my training, where I need to get like get get closer to God, so that when that trial is come, it's coming, right? It's not a matter of if, mm. it's a matter of when. But and when that trial comes, I've done the training that I've needed to do to get myself prepared for it. Okay, so I'm gonna ask you something because you just opened the book back up for me. I gotta ask this question: Your training? What is your training? Because the reason I ask this is because I see my training as the trial, as the circumstance I'm going through. See, for me, in my head, that's my training. But, but when you say you've done your training, what, 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 what would you say your training is? What's your technique? 
my training is focusing on God and, and all that He's done for me, and that relationship oh. that 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 that's been that's been so prevalent in my life. The praying, the the study, the learning the character of God, and never forgetting, you know, what that character is, and and you know, just getting really innately, um, uh, just just that innate understanding of who he is so that when that trial comes, I'm not questioning who I'm, who, who the players of the game is. I'm just questioning where they are, and I'm looking for them. And, and, and in that process of getting to know them, I know exactly where to start to find, where, where to start looking at them from. So that, for me, is where my training starts. Mm. See, see, wow. You know, I, I think that – I really do think that that's amazing because, like, I um, – I don't know. I, I guess I live on the other side. I'm like, you know what? I'm going through, and this is my training. Like I think of it, how we train the military, right? Right. But but I, I thought I was hearing you say, hey, you know, this is my training, and I study the word, and I listen, and I pray. I apply all these things so that when the trial comes, I've been practiced or training on how to fall back and read the word of God and to pray and to meditate, I can put them into action. Now, I know those aren't the exact words you use, but that's kind of what I was hearing as you were talking. That's why I asked you to elaborate on that. And, um, um, yeah, I, I think that, I think that that's, man, I like that. I, I, I think that that's good because it is important that we, condition ourselves and train ourselves. But more importantly, we do have to continue to study the word. Uh, have you ever gone like a, a week or two and not studied the word, Jason, or longer? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And and, um, and, 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 and and how did it make you feel? How did you feel not studying the word that long? It just, it, it just, it takes its toll on you, right? It, 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 you start to lose your focus. You start to lose the the power you start to you start to almost for me that I know when I'm outside the word when when I start to get really in, involved in my circumstances and I'm feeling that oh. that that frustration and those other things that that I typically don't feel but I'm feeling them because my circumstances are getting to are getting to a point of being overwhelming and they're only that at that point because. I've I've lost my focus, right? I've lost my yeah. focus uh, of like what I'm actually, uh, what I should be focused on. Oh wow! See, I, when when I get to that point, I'm exactly like that. I feel like I've lost focus, but I keep that word in front of me, and when I keep the word in front of me, man, it makes me it makes me do things that I would not ordinarily do. And the, the most important thing that I do when I have the word in front of me is what? I focus on Christ as opposed to my situation or my circumstance. That's another reason why I try to keep the word in front of me. I realized growing up as a kid when I would see all these Bibles in our house and in my grandparents' house and stuff like that. We went to visit people. You know how it was. You live in the hood. People get shot every day. But you see a Bible and a picture of Jesus. Always. Why? Right. I used to wonder that. I tell you, I believe I understand it now. If I keep God out in front of me, he is my shield. Like, he is the one that's going to protect me. He's my guiding light. That way I don't get so into Cedric that I go out and, and do things to make these problems occur, right? You know, instead of slapping that man who cut me off in the grocery store, because Jesus just in front of me, I was just talking to Christ in the car before I went in the store. I ain't snapping at this guy. I'm praying for this guy. I ain't saying I ain't got an attitude, but I'm just praying for him. So um, I think you're right with that. I think you're right with that, Jason. But with that part said, um, I'm, I'm just, I'm just, uh, I'm just, I'm just ecstatic to be back today. And uh, with my last 10 seconds, I just want to say again, everybody, thank you all for for visiting uh, me and Jason tonight. And as we always say at this time, find something you love.
chase it, embrace it, and that is your relentless pursuit. This is Minister Cedric and Jason. Wishing y'all a wonderful weekend. God bless you, and we'll see you next week. Have a good night. When you hear his voice. Dang, baby girl. <laughs> she looking all sad for you, yo. God got you. You have everything to smile about, you know. Do you hear his voice? You know, you, you know, be swift to listen, slow to speak. Slow to rave, you know what I mean? Down and out, down the bout, circumstance that you face, feeling you can't make it, but you can take it, cause you more of than a conqueror, the devil trying to creep up around your house, spread out, flap your wings, keep on flying, you do not hide enough to keep on trying, no need to dry your tears, keep on crying, tears of joy, listen up, hear his voice, and blood dripping down his fingertips. Don't remember nothing, remember this, remember we celebrate December with obedience. We just don't seem to get Jesus came to serve, not to be serving people. Quoting scripture does not in the word, word. He here now, so you have nothing to fear now. Come on, y'all do what to do. Come on, y'all. Give his voice, it's up to what to do. Find a quiet place to pray. And just let God have his way. Walking, not get fame. No more words of won't or can't. No more words of won't or can't. Now you got one life to live. You should give all you can give. When you hear his voice, precious salt water don't flow down the same stream. Religion's getting poisonous like gangrene. By no means you can serve through masses. Wonder why bad luck coming too fast. 